Welcome to the Business Method Podcast. You guys are welcome back to the Business Method Podcast. Today, our guest was recently named one of the 10 most influential people in sleep. He is on the clinical, uh, clinical advisory board of the famous Dr. Oz show and appeared on that show 40 times, 4-0. Yep. He's been interviewed on CNN, Oprah, The View, Anderson Cooper, Rachel Ray, CBS, Early Show, The Today Show, and many, many, many more. He is the author of The Power of When, a number one at Amazon bestseller. He is also the author of a second book, The Sleep Doctor's Diet Plan, which talks about how you can lose weight through better sleep. And he has a new book called Energize, From Dragging Your Ass to Kicking It in 30 Days. His personal clients range from Paris Hilton, the famous DJ Steve Aoki, and Carson Daly. His name is Dr. Michael Bruce, and he lectures all over the world for organizations such as AT&T, for Tony Robbins' uh, event, Unleash the Power Within, and he's one of the leading sleep doctors in the world. He's on the podcast today to talk about, you guessed it, guys, sleep. <laughs> Dr. Michael, how are you doing? I'm doing great, Chris. Thanks for having me on your show. Thanks for coming on the show, and I appreciate you taking the time because I know you have a busy schedule to come on our podcast and share with our listeners. Um, I know, and you know as well, entrepreneurs are always struggling with sleep, any type yep. of hard performers. Um, we have really, uh, quite often we have really busy, busy brains. It's hard to shut those off. You know, right. we get sleep insomnia, we get a new idea, we stay up through the middle of the night. And it's, it's, it's challenging for a lot of us sometimes. Absolutely. And, and also we're learning a lot about neuroscience and neurochemicals and the importance of sleep. You know, I used to pride myself. I grew up in the Midwest, and so I used to pride myself on less sleep was great, work from dusk till dawn, right. and the more you work, the more of a man you are, right? Like, exactly. And less sleep you have, of course, like the, the stronger of a person you are. Right. And uh, to the point where I burnt myself out, and I did a brain scan, and it was just like, you know, voltage down, what's happening there. Um, so I worked with a, a neurologist over the past couple of years to mm. reamplify my brain and optimize it. So I've learned the hard way, the importance of sleep. Um, but now we have you on the show so we can dive even deeper. And I really appreciate you coming. So, so thank oh, yeah. you so much. Well, first of all, I'm glad to hear that you were able to figure that out. Um, because that's not an uncommon scenario. Mm -hmm. um, you know, look, I'm a high performance sleep coach and you're exactly the type of person that I've coached before. You know, when we talk about entrepreneurship, um, you know, it really is about time management, right? Yeah. It's all about how much time can I spend on my idea, improving my business, figuring out the problems, plugging the leaks, you know, so on and so forth. And there's, there's never enough time right mm -hmm. to be able to do it all yeah. and so what what gets sacrificed is sleep you know especially for entrepreneurs i call sleep like the shock absorber of their lives right because it's like <laughs> it kind of goes up and down based on like where you are like if you're super high stress you're staying up late and not getting enough sleep and if things are going well with your business then you've actually in you know deployed some more sleep and so you're you know kind of catching up and trying to feel better and then it seems to go a lot like this and there, the data is actually incredibly consistent. The more consistent your sleep is and the more that you get the right amount of sleep and the quality of sleep for you, which mm -hmm. can be variable, the better you're gonna succeed uh, in every way, shape and form. I mean, just to give you a couple of quick, interesting statistics, when we look at it from a management perspective, we know that well-slept managers uh, get better morale scores from their employees and get their employees to actually produce more work product. Mm -hmm. We uh, we know that if you're not well slept, being sleep deprived, um, you actually there's there's a study that showed that um, people were in a shark tank kind of situation to evaluate somebody's idea, and the people who were more sleep deprived completely missed the point of the presentation. So you're mm -hmm. not even seeing, you're not able to see and seek out those new opportunities that you want. And of course, decision making kind of flies out the window when you're sleep deprived. Right. So if you're pretty exhausted, you know, you're going to be making decisions that aren't well thought out, that aren't holistic to your business. They're going to be like, I just want it to happen so that I can go take a nap. And so there, there's a lot of data now and specifically in work environments to show how important sleep is. And then, of course, the side side uh, step here is if you're in a 24 hour manufacturing environment. Right. So mm -hmm. we got people working the night shift and what how does that affect people? And so how do you keep those people 
motivated? How do you keep those people on task becomes a whole nother sleep related issue. So we got lots to talk about, bro. We've got a lot to talk about. Yeah. I ever, I always wonder like, you know, whoever created the universe, why did they create us with the need to sleep? And it's a really good question. We can dive into Mm -hmm. it, but I, I just want to point something out is like, you know, we need it because all animals sleep, but also the way that the earth and the sun are all connected uh, Mm -hmm. and the moon and the things that happen to our brains and bodies when nighttime comes along and then when we sleep best in the dark compared to in the daylight and uh, melatonin in our, in our, throughout our systems and, and everything. So it it was designed really well that way, whoever designed it. And, um, And, uh, but, but why, like it just, well, why, why, here, why? Here's, so number one, Matthew Walker wrote a book called why we sleep. Unfortunately, uh-huh. he didn't really answer the question um, <laughs> because we don't know um, nothing against Matt. He's a great guy, smart dude. Uh-huh. But at the end of the day, we know a lot about what happens when we don't sleep. Yeah. Like we know a lot about what happens to our bodies and our brains and our emotions when we're sleep deprived. Um, but you're right. Every living creature, everything with a nervous system, has a period of what we call quiescence. So mm-hmm. if it's not a very evolved form or creature, they're just gonna stop movement. If, if they actually have a full on nervous system, they actually, there's multiple forms of sleep, if you will. And, and you know, you bring up an interesting point, like let's just say for lack of a better term, there's some great thing in the universe that created sleep. Mm-hmm. If you think about it, if it doesn't serve an incredibly important function, it's gotta be the biggest joke that's ever been played (laughs) on anybody in the face of the earth, right? right? Because think about it. So picture this, if an alien came down and you explained to an alien what you were doing for sleep, they'd pretty much think that that was the perfect time to invade your planet, right? right? I mean, you're out, you're completely unconscious, you're completely vulnerable, Mm -hmm. right? To anything and everything that's out there. Mm -hmm. Uh, I I mean, and then by the way, you have these weird fantastical images that go flying through your head that aren't real, but they certainly feel real. Mm -hmm. And when you wake up, sometimes you're screaming from them because somebody is chasing you Mm -hmm. um, or you've walked into the kitchen and all of a sudden you wake up and you, and and you got a frying pan going uh, because you're sleepwalking, right? I mean, there's a, there's like, it makes no sense right. why we sleep until you start to really think about what happens when we don't, right? And so that is a personal definition of what we call sleep deprivation. And so the more sleep deprived the body comes uh, becomes, rather, there's three big areas that we see that are a big problem. So physical, mm-hmm. right? Emotional and cognitive, right? So the physical is pretty straightforward. Reaction time slows down. If you drive a forklift, um, you know, it, it's not good if you're sleep deprived. Uh, But by the way, if you drive carpool, it's not too good either, right? And so don't just think, hey, it's only those guys and gals that are working the heavy machinery, because if you drive a car to work and you're sleep deprived, you are driving a very vicious vehicle Mm. um, at a a point in time that you may not know exactly what's going on all the time. Yeah. Um, For the guys out there, here's an interesting statistic. If you lose an hour of sleep a night for five nights, your testosterone drops by 30%. Oh, we don't want that. Three, zero, dude. Yeah. So when I'm working with professional athletes, which I, I, I'm very fortunate, I get the opportunity to do that sometimes. Um, that's the first statistic I throw out there is, is like, dude, you're 22 and you're a rookie in the NBA. When you're sleep deprived, you're playing like a 33 year old. You want to change that? Oh, wow. Everybody says yes. Yes. Right? Yeah. Cognitively, we just don't think straight. Right. Yeah. I mean, think about it. When you're tired, do you really want to make a complicated decision? Of course yeah. not right? You, you go to the quickest decision that you possibly can because you, you just want to keep moving on. And then emotionally, um, my daughter says it best. Or when she was young, she used to say it best. She'd say, daddy, when people are sleepy, they're grumpy fish. I was like, <laughs> you nailed it. That's exact. Like, I know exactly what you're saying, hon, uh-huh. and that's exactly right. When people are sleep deprived, they're grumpy fish, right? And so who the hell wants to go to work with a grumpy fish? Nobody. Nobody. No. Right. So, so sleep becomes super duper critical. I'll, I'll give you another statistic. You can make it for about six or eight minutes without air. Right. You can make it for about three days without water. Right. Believe it or not, you can make it for almost 30 days without food. Right. You can't really go much more than about six or seven days without sleep before really bad shit starts to happen. So mm. air, water, and sleep are your top three from a pure human existence standpoint. 
basically, if you can figure those out, I'd say everything else is gravy on the taters. Right. You think that should be like the first thing we learned at school, air, water, and sleep, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> Seems pretty had, obvious to me. Teachers had to optimize all three of those really, really well. Yeah. Right. And, and now actually is in particular a really interesting time. Like let's talk about air, new book mm -hmm. out called Breath by James Nestor. Lots of people are doing Wim Hof breathing, getting mm -hmm. into breath work. Smart, smart. Like yeah. if you control your breathing, you control a whole host of things uh, that are going on. Hydration. We've now got more hydration products in the marketplace. That people are able to absorb, uh, you know, their nutrients better, things of that nature. Mm -hmm. Makes a lot of sense. You know, make sure you've got good water going into your system and then sleep. And like I said, after that, I'm pretty sure everything else is gravy. Yeah, we can take care of the rest, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. um, all right. I love this stuff. So, so. Um, here's a question. So I want to see if we can break some of the, the, the thought patterns around sleep here. You bet. Um, why do you think the vast, probably the vast majority of people, especially entrepreneurs think that they don't need or can go without sleep? Oh, well, that's actually very simple. Yeah. Um, so that has to do with over caffeinating, mm -hmm. um, and being an adrenaline junkie, which most entrepreneurs are anyway. Mm -hmm. Right. And so what ends up happening is you end up pushing yourself past that window of opportunity for sleep. And okay. then your brain says, oh shit, why am I awake? I better spike cortisol, which is the fight or flight hormone, because I don't know why I'm still awake. Right. And when you got cortisol running around your brain, that's like the opposite of melatonin. Yeah. So being able to fall asleep once that's, once that's happened, is almost an impossibility, number one. So just getting jazzed about things, getting excited about your ideas and things like that, and not spending time in a in what I would call an energy management schedule as opposed mm -hmm. to a time management schedule. A lot of entrepreneurs have difficulty with time, but I teach my uh, all of my patients how to manage their energy so that way they can have consistent energy all day long and they don't have yeah. to worry about, is it three o'clock in the morning? Do I need to go to bed yet? type of thing. And so I think a lot of people kind of fall into those traps uh, very easily. And to be fair, it's easy to push off sleep. I mean, just slug another coffee, uh, drink a Red Bull, you know, whatever you want to do. And there's actually a part of our brain that the more sleep deprived we get, the less it tells us to stop. Because way mm. back in caveman days, if you were tired and a saber tooth tiger was, was uh, hot on your tail, you probably didn't stop and take a nap. Right. Yeah. So, so that's been ingrained <laughs> in us. Uh, so the saber tooth tiger is now, you know, money, uh, finances, uh, COVID, uh, what have you. And it's mm -hmm. causing all this stress and things like that, which is just keeping our brain awake because that's what our brain needs to do. What's the first benefit that people start to see when they start to get more sleep, more better sleep? So here's the thing is I like to talk to people about more sleep or better sleep and they're okay. two different things. So we're talking about sleep quantity okay. and sleep quality are two different things. So here's what I can tell you that usually happens. And by the way, it's actually fairly simple to figure out how to make your sleep better um, mm -hmm. is just wake up at the exact same time every single day. Notice I didn't say go to sleep. I said, wake just up. waking up, okay. Your wake up time is the anchor for, if everybody gets one piece of advice from our podcast today, mm -hmm. it's wake up at the same time every single day. Mm. Now, I will tell you, there are basically four different wake up times based on these things called your chronotype yeah. um, that, I, that I would describe to people. And so you might not have heard of the term chronotype, but everybody's actually heard of the concept. Yeah. If you've ever been called an early bird or a night owl, those are chronotypes. Um, by the way, you don't get to choose which one you want to be. They're genetic. <laughs> um, lots of people are like, I'm going to be an early bird dude. No, it doesn't not. work that way. I wish it did. Um, trust me, because then I wouldn't be a night owl. I've been a night owl my whole life and it's mm -hmm. definitely been on the more difficult side. But if you wake up at the same time every day, based on your chronotype, here's what you will start to see. Your mental fog starts to lift because the melatonin is now knowing when to turn off. So mm -hmm. you don't have that morning. ugh, I can't drag my ass out of bed. I can't think about things type of feelings. That's one of the first things that we see happen. Mm -hmm. The second things that we see happen is your sleep actually consolidates. You see fewer awakenings in the middle of the night. A lot of entrepreneurs tell me, you know what, Dr. Bruce, I wake up between two and three o'clock in the morning and all of a sudden an idea hits my head and I am done. I can't stop. My brain goes on and on and on. I can't. That goes away oh, once we nice. get you locked and loaded in a good sleep schedule because what we're doing is we're teaching your brain consistency. Mm -hmm. Okay. So 
if you really look at sleep from a, from a defined perspective, the ways to sleep, there's two philosophical things that you have to understand. One is discipline. Mm -hmm. The other is acceptance. Okay? okay. So discipline is waking up at the same time every single day. And I've got a whole host of other tips and tricks that I'll teach people throughout the podcast, but that's the biggie. But the acceptance comes for a very particular reason. We're going to have a great conversation and I'm going to teach people all kinds of things that they can do about their sleep. But I have news for you, Chris. Every once in a while, people are going to do every single thing right and it's not going to work. Mm, okay. Yeah. It just isn't right? Because nobody's a perfect sleeper. Like I'm the sleep doctor and I'm not a perfect sleeper, right? Yeah. I mean, honestly, if there's something going on with my daughter, I don't sleep well, period. Mm. It doesn't matter what I do. I could take an Ambien. I could smoke <laughs> weed. It doesn't matter. <laughs> I'm not going to sleep well because something's going on with my daughter, uh -huh. right? And so that acceptance level is what's important for people to start to understand yeah. is even if you do all of the things right, there's on occasion, you're still going to have a bad night and that is survivable. Yes. You, you, your brain is not going to explode. Your head is not going to pop off, you know, your shoulders if you get a bad night of sleep. Because let's be honest, almost everybody listening to this podcast has had plenty of nights, uh, sleepless nights and bad nights of sleep before. And they're still here and they're still listening and they're still kind of doing their thing. And so not putting tremendous, tremendous importance on sleep in the middle of the night, yet understanding its importance for our functionality during the daytime, I think is where that balance really has to occur. But if yeah. people were to do one thing, it's wake up at the same time every day based on your chronotype. So if we accept it, that means we can't be sleep perfectionists. Like I find myself trying to be a sleep perfectionist sometimes. Good luck. Like, yes, I know it's hard. Like, and I wore a whoop band and, and measured my sure. uh, deep sleep and REM and mm -hmm. I would wake up and I'd be disappointed because I didn't get enough deep sleep that night. And I'm like, Oh, right. Right. I failed. So, <laughs> so let's talk. So let's, let's kind of double tap on that for a second, yes. right? Because there's a lot of entrepreneurs who do that, right? They'll go buy an aura ring. That's the, that's the tracking method that I personally use and prefer. Uh -huh. You tried the whoop strap. Yeah. Um, here's what, here's what happens that you don't know what to do with the data. Yeah. I know exactly what to do with the data. I'm a freaking sleep doctor. Of course I know what to do with the data. <laughs> right. But the average person, like, look, if you got 14 minutes of deep sleep last night, you're going to think that's terrible because it's on a red bar. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to turn to you and say, I'm going to look at your entire last two weeks of sleep. And if you've never gotten more than 14 minutes, I'm going to tell you that it's just fine because yeah. that's what your body is doing at that particular time. And we're not probably a hundred percent sure of the accuracy of said device. Right? right. So why don't we not freak out and understand that it's about the Delta, right? It's about the differences mm -hmm. between the points. It's not about, I look at my, my score one morning and it says I had a bad morning and then I get depleted over it. It's well, hold on. I didn't get a great score this morning, but I wonder why. Oh, well, because, you know, I ate spicy food at, you know, 1030 at night last night. And mm -hmm. oh, well, I guess it had an effect on me. Learning from those data points is far more important than judging ourselves about our sleep. And just to be clear, there is no such thing as sleep perfection. Um, it doesn't work. And if it did, I would have found it by now. I've been doing this for 23 years. Yeah. So I can assure you it ain't out there. It doesn't exist. It doesn't. Well, it's good oh, to well. know that even you're challenged with sleep from time to time, you know, of course. because if the sleep doctor is challenged with sleep, like we're all going to be challenged with sleep. And so, exactly. and there's all different things that could happen. Like even the weather can affect our sleep, you know? And so, so we're coming into the winter months, yes. right? And so what does that mean? That means lowered light exposure. Yeah. When you have lowered light exposure, it directly affects your sleep cycle. Most people don't know, but when you wake up in the morning and you open up your eyes, when light hits your eyes, you have a very particular cell in your eye called a melanopsin cell. Okay. It sends a signal to your brain to turn off the melatonin faucet in your head, right? Mm. So if you don't wake up and you don't get that set, right? Turn on, turns it off. You're going to be sleepy all morning. That's where brain fog comes in. That's uh -huh. not going to be too fun. So once again, it's really, there's some very simple rules that can make it easy. And, but to be fair, nobody's going to be perfect. Nobody's going to be perfect. Let's, let's talk about the chronotypes a bit more. So you said there's an early bird and a night owl. And I took your test and I uh, shared with you that I'm a bear. Um, right. So what's going on with all these animals, right? Yes. Tell us Early night owls, bears, lions. Yes giraffes what the hell's going on here right? <laughs> oh my <laughs> oh my exactly i know dave asprey said the same thing when he heard when he when mm. i started talking to him about uh the book uh before the, the older book so chronotype so we have early birds we have night owls we kind of know what those are again those are genetic um believe it or not dude i can look at your 23andme data or your ancestry.com data 
I can show you exactly where the single nucleotide polymorphism or the SNP occurs, where there's a switching of the building blocks of your DNA, which is causing you to be an early bird or which is causing you to be a night owl. Okay. Now, back in the 70s was when this was all kind of recognized. And there was a questionnaire called the morningness eveningness questionnaire. It only looked at the, at, the, at the poles, like the extremes, the early birds and the night owls. And then somebody was like, hold on a second. Not everybody's an early bird. Not everybody's a night owl. Mm -hmm. So they called people in the middle hummingbirds. Okay? okay. So when I got a hold of all of this information, I had a patient who was an extreme, extreme night owl mm -hmm. um, to the point where she couldn't go to bed before two o'clock in the morning ever. Right. And I didn't know that at first I thought she was an insomniac mm -hmm. and I failed miserably on her case. I mean, I tried and tried, we tried drugs, we tried cognitive behavioral therapy, we tried everything you can imagine. It just wasn't working. Yeah. So when I got back in there, cause I'm a, I'm like a dog with a bone. Like if, if you're a patient <laughs> and I haven't fixed you, like you're going to be my patient until I do. Okay. Um, and I got in there and she said something to me that I thought was so fascinating. She said, Dr. Bruce, we were, uh, I think we were in Georgia at the time. She said, if I could just live on California time, like two time zones away, my life would be perfect. And I was like, that's interesting. Yeah. Okay. Why don't you? And she was like, well, my kids get up at a certain time. My husband gets up and I have to be at work at a certain time. And so it's, it's kind of all messed up. And so I was like, well, why don't we ask your boss if you can come in later? And she's like, mm, my boss already told me I'm pretty much going to get fired at the end of the week. I'm falling asleep in meetings. Like this was a serious situation. <laughs> wow. for her, Right. Okay. So I was like, Hey, can I call your boss? She's like, go ahead. So I called her boss. I explained who I was and what I wanted to do. I said, look, I just wanted to, instead of coming in at nine, I wanted to come in at 1030. And instead of leaving at five, I want to leave at 630. Mm -hmm. Can you do that for a week? And he was like, I'm firing her at the end of the week of Michael. I don't really care what I do. Like no pressure. <laughs> right. It's just like, right. she's done. Right. So I, I, we ran the experiment. I called him on Friday. I'm like, what happened? He was like, I got three more employees. I want you to talk to those are the first words out of his mouth. Wow. Wow. Yeah, it was fascinating, right? So what he said was, he was like, I never understood this chronotypical idea. And this is important for a lot of you entrepreneurs out there to understand. Mm -hmm. um, people have certain energy levels based on their hormones at certain times of day. So an early bird, what we're calling a lion, by the way, we're renaming this, this group. Okay. Okay. Let's say they wake up at 530 in the morning, which is a lot of times what lions do all of their sleep hormones turn off at that time, all of their wake hormones turn on, and there's a very predictable flow to the next 24 hours of what's mm -hmm. going on, okay? Now, let's say that that person um, is married to a night owl, okay? The night owl doesn't wanna get up until 7.30, almost two hours later, <laughs> guess what? They then go on the same journey, same hormones, but it's a two hour time lag. Right. So you can see where the adjustments don't come in for a married couple. Now, now put yourself into an employment situation, right? right? You got 20 people, let's say, who are in your business or five or 500, mm -hmm. right? Knowing what their chronotypes are allows you to have meetings when you can set it up so that they are paying attention. Because the biggest problem with employees is they don't pay attention to the meetings. They don't, they screw something up and yes. they don't follow the direction that you gave them very clearly. Right. But they don't follow it. Why? Because their brains aren't turned on at that particular time. Mm -hmm. So, and actually I mentioned Dave Asprey. So when this book, when my first, uh, actually my third book came out, the power of when Dave liked it so much, he chronotyped everybody in bulletproof. Wow. And he had them put their chronotype on their name badges. Oh, wow. And then he scheduled meetings based on your chronotype. Nice. So we know that most creatives are wolves. They're night people. Mm -hmm. um, and so my artists, my actors, my uh, authors are all uh, wolves, which I call the night owls. Um, and so guess what? Having a creative meeting at eight o'clock on Monday is a really stupid idea, <laughs> right? When all of your creatives can barely keep their eyes open, right? right. But if wow. you had it, at 4.30 on a Thursday and you brought beer, guess what? Boom, you get everything that you're looking <laughs> for, right? And so there's real utility to understanding these chronotypes. So lion is the early bird. Mm -hmm. These are usually my COOs, by the way. These are my kind of alpha militant people who, you know, they make a list every day and go from step one to step two to step three to step four. Very, very systematic in their thinking, okay? Gotcha. By the way, everybody wants to be a lion, not as much fun as you might think. Um, mm. They're up at 4.35 o'clock in the morning. So dinner and a movie is out for a yeah. lion. 
socially, they have really tough times because literally they want to go to bed at eight o'clock. Yeah. Right. So it's not so great for them. You are a bear. A yes. bear represents the hummingbird or the people in between. Now, I would rather be a bear than any other chronotype. And here's why. All of society is built on a bear's schedule. We have almost 50% of people are bears. So one in two people that you meet have got that schedule where they get up at 7.30, they're at work by nine, they finish work by five, they have dinner at seven, they're in bed by 10. Like mm -hmm. that universe works really, really well because that's kind of what we do, especially here in the United States. Mm -hmm. Now, if you have listeners who are in different countries, which I'm guessing that you probably do on certain do. levels, yeah. like for example, Latin America, they have a very different schedule. Why? Because they have siesta in the middle of the daytime. They have all kinds of different things going on. So they're taking advantage of it in a very different way. Yeah. Then we talk about our night owls. That's me again. Um, that makes up about 15 percent of the population. Again, artists, actors, creatives. Um, we're great at parties, um, but we're terrible decision makers. We're high risk. Mm. Um, we like to do risky things like if you want to parachute, parachute with a the wolf. They'll be the first one out the plane. Type of thing. Um, <laughs> okay. So um, now wolves are night creatures, right? I don't go to bed before midnight ever. Mm -hmm. I just don't. It's just not in my nature to do mm -hmm. so. Um, and so mm -hmm. I like, I like, I tell people all the time, the only thing I hate more than mornings are morning people. They're just a damn <laughs> chipper in the mornings. Like I don't want to be anywhere near that shit, right? Yes. Those are the night owls. Now, what my contribution to the literature was, is I added a fourth category. So like okay. I said, in the 70s, they pretty much figured these things out. And to be honest with you, a lot earlier than that, if you go back to hunter-gatherer days, right? Who were the hunters? They were the lions, the guys that got up early in the morning, and that's when they mm. went and hunted. Who were the bears, the people that tended the village, the people that kind of got all that stuff done? Who were the wolves? They were the security force. They're up anyway, right? They yeah. might as well be guarding everybody. So those three chronotypes have been around for long, long, long periods of time. But, you know, this woman, she really interested me with this weird extreme wolf chronotype. Um, turns out she actually had a genetic form of insomnia. Okay. And that turned out to be the fourth chronotype. And it was right in line with the same other genetics that we see in the PER3 region. And so I said, okay, we're going to add insomniac to this. So we've got early birds, people in the middle, night owls, and insomniacs. So I changed the names to, to um, animals um, because I wanted to have a whole new system. Now, okay. I will tell you this as a side note for anybody out there who's interested in writing a book. When you're in the marketing meeting for your book and you're trying to figure out what names you want to call the avatars of which you have just created, right? Mm -hmm. My uh, early bird, mid, uh, hummingbird, night owl, and insomniac. I chose animals and then I said, I want the animal to actually represent the chronotype. Like I want the animal yeah. to actually fit into the chronotype. Turns out nobody wants to be a porcupine. <laughs> True story or right? slug or, you know, right? rat. Or so, <laughs> right. Nobody wants to be a platypus, right? You know, so it was like, we're kind of doing a little head scratching, trying yeah. to figure all these out, but we were able to find these animals. And so insomniacs become dolphins. Now you might be wondering, all right, dolphins, what does that have to do with sleep? Turns out dolphins sleep uni-hemispherically. So half of their brain is asleep while the other half is awake and looking for predators. And I said to myself, that feels like insomnia to me, right? Like yeah. never quite asleep. So it's lions are early birds, yeah. bears are hummingbirds, wolves are night owls, and dolphins are insomniacs. Um, yeah. And so once you figure out your chronotype, and by the way, if you go to chronoquiz.com, that's my website. You can go there for free. It doesn't cost you a dime. You'll learn. You, uh, Chris did it himself. He'll I did. tell you the whole story. It takes about three minutes. Um, what's interesting there is not only do you get information back from me that tells you what time you should go to bed, what time you should wake up, when you should drink coffee, when you should drink alcohol, all of those types of things, but it really gives you a secret weapon that you may not understand that you have. Because once you can start identifying your chronotype, you can also start identifying other people's chronotypes, mm. right? And so the book is the the book, The Power of When, really breaks it down. I teach people the best time of day to have sex, eat a cheeseburger, ask their boss for a raise, wake up, go to bed, like, and it's all real science over wow. two hundred and twenty studies in the book. So. We're super excited. That book came out five years ago. It's called The Power of When. Um, and we've had literally over a million people take my quiz now. Um, so people are interested and into it and things like that. So, uh, you know, five years has kind of gone by. And I was working with a friend of mine, uh, Stacy Griffith. 
So Stacy is a trainer. She's actually the founding trainer of a company called Soul Cycle. If you're familiar, they do the uh, the bicycles, the indoor bicycle thing. Mm-hmm. So um, we were talking, and um, we were talking. She was helping me with my fitness. I was helping her with her sleep. And she turned to me, uh, and she was like, "Why are my clients always so exhausted?" And I turned to her and I said, "You know what? My clients say they're exhausted too, even if they're getting good sleep." And so we were like, "There has to be." a mesh here. There has to be something that's going on with exercise and sleep that we can teach people how to no longer be so exhausted. Mm -hmm. So I turned to Stacy and I was like, how do you know what exercise is to tell people to do? Right? Because I don't like to do exercise. I'm a wolf. I hate exercise. So she found exercises that were kind of fun that I could do really well and and made me want to do them. So I'm like, how did you figure out how to do that? And she's like, oh, that's easy, Michael. I looked at your body type. So body type, yeah. High school, high yeah. school biology, right? So mm-hmm. endomorph, mesomorph, ectomorph, is that body type? And she was like, exactly. And I was like, holy shit. Mm-hmm. So I said, if we take the four chronotypes and we layer in the three body types, I wonder what could happen here. So okay. look, I had a million people take the quiz. So we, we sent emails out to about 5,000 people. And we said, look, Michael's doing some more research. We'd love to, if you're comfortable, take the second quiz about body type took the quiz about body type and everything became even more revealed. Mm. We started to learn that wolves or night people, most of them do not have the long and lean body type. Most of them either have a V-shaped, what we call a mesomorph or an endomorph, a little bit thicker side. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. When you look at lions, many lions have got the long and lean body type. Interesting. Mm, Now it's getting interesting, right? And so all Uh of a sudden, and, and by the way, based on genetics as well. So just the the weight doesn't matter about the body type. It's actually the genetics themselves. So we're taking two genetic principles of chronotype and body type, putting them together. And that's where all the learning came in. And so what we discovered was if we gave people the time to go to sleep and the time to wake up, got that one nailed in the last book based on chronotype, that's easy. Yeah. Then we said, we figure out which exercises they like to do based on their body types, because we want them to do these exercises. And then we said, well, we don't want people, you know, working out and getting all sweaty and things like that. And we really want people to have this constant energy, right? Mm-hmm. Because that's the goal here, not to be exhausted after you exercise, not to be exhausted after you sleep, but really nice, good, clean energy the whole time. We said, we're going to have people do five times a day, five minutes of exercise. You don't have to sweat. You don't have to do really much at all. Just follow the guidelines. So each one of the five different types of exercises does something different. So everybody starts out their day doing one five minute session of um, stretch, right? Makes sense. You've been lying in bed for six, seven, eight hours. You kind of stiffened up. Let's Mm -hmm. let's kind of wake it all up, right? (laughs) Then the next three times, so that's done in the morning. Then you have one um, kind of before lunch, Uh, Then you have one during lunch, then you have one after, and then one at dinner. So there's five different times. So in those three times, there's three different categories of exercises, and each one is given to you based on your chronotype. Um, There's, uh, let's see, there's shake, which is kind of shake it off type Mm -hmm. of thing. I don't know if you've ever noticed an animal, but when they wake up, what's the first thing that they do? (laughs) Yeah, they do that whole shaky thing, and they're wide awake. Yeah, Uh, gives them energy. Uh, So we do a shake. The next one we do is a bounce. Um, okay. A bounce could be jumping jacks. It could be just flopping your arms, uh, things like this, bouncing, skipping. Um, by the way, these sound very silly to do, okay? Like they sound ridiculous. Try them. Yes. You'll be shocked at how effective they are. <laughs> these are um, things that we told kindergartners to do, and they're always happy. And <laughs> like I said, right. it really works. Exactly. <laughs> Right. Be a kid again, like learn from that because there's a lot there to learn. The third uh, section is build. So that's actually strengthening exercises to build the major muscle groups. And everybody then ends the day with balance. Um, This is my favorite one to do for multiple reasons. The biggest reason is when you're standing in tree pose next to your bed, you can't think of anything else. And it helps to shut down your brain. Mm. So it's very effective when you start to do those kinds of movements. And so we have five movements, five times a day. So you don't do all five. You just do one in each one of each category when you want to do them. And then we said, well, energy has a lot to do with fuel, Mm -hmm. right? And so what is, what are you sticking in your body? Right. right? So, so if we're going to control how you move and we're going to control how you sleep, or at least give you guidance, we probably need to talk about nutrition. Yeah. 
dude, I got to be honest with you. That's a big friggin' topic. Oh, it's I huge. Mean, yeah. It's yeah. massive. And then what if you're a vegetarian? What if you're a vegan? What if you're a paleo? What if you're a Mediterranean? Who the hell knows? So, <laughs> so we said, okay, we're not going to tell you what to eat, but we are going to tell you when to eat and for how long. Okay. And we, so we're doing intermittent fasting. So here's the thing that most people don't know. When you go back to the body types, endomorph is the long and lean. Mm -hmm. Mesomorph is kind of the more V shape and endomorph is kind of the more thicker pear shape. Okay. It turns out that's all based on metabolism. Mm, that makes okay. sense. Yeah. Right. So if we pair, if we know what your body type is based on your metabolism, we can then tell you when to fast mm. based on your chronotype wow. and how long to fast based on your body type. Yes. Hello. It's all <laughs> genetics, bro. And so once we layer all this stuff in, it's very, it's really a simple routine to do. And so for certain types, they'll, they'll have longer fasting schedules. So for example, if you're a long and lean, you don't need to fast for 16 hours yeah. because your body's already blowing through your calories. You want to fast for 12 hours and eat for 12 hours. Yeah. But if you're a medium type like me, maybe you want to fast for 16 hours and feed for eight hours to keep you where you are. And then if you're a little bit on the bigger side, maybe you want to fast for longer, right? Mm. And then maybe you want to fast for 18 hours and then be able to feed for six hours to be able to, again, get you to some of those body goals. And again, what's also interesting is when you're not putting carbohydrates in your body all day long, you have energy. Why? From something called autophagy. So uh -huh. autophagy is this interesting process that happens that as you fast, your body starts to clean out and clear out all the old cellular damage, get all that stuff out of there. And then it starts to burn fat, like uh -huh. straight up burning your fat. Uh -huh. That's the cleanest most useful energy that a human can have. Let think about it. If you're eating a Snickers, right? Your, your energy goes like this and then it like crashes, this, yes. right? But if you're well nutrient, got your, you know, got your macros, got your micros going, you run like that all day long, straight yep. through. Yep. So that's what the, the new book, which is called Energize, how to go from dragging ass to kicking it in 30 days is all about. So we have an intermittent fasting program, a movement program and a sleep program all based on genetics. I love that. I, and I have to share this with you. I've, I've started keto about three months ago and mm -hmm. I do it just Monday through Friday. Cause I, you know, I'm a bear and I like to like play a little. Absolutely, on the weekends, right? bro. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, um, when I'm on it, my, uh, my energy levels are better. They're consistent all throughout <laughs> the day and they, um, and then, um, my sleep is less but I wake up refreshed yep. and I'm like, and I wake up like the yesterday morning, I woke up at like five 15 and I was like ready What's to go. On? I had to get out of bed, like, you know, and, and it's been phenomenal, but you know, there's a lot of people say, well, we don't know if keto or paleo is really sustainable over the long term. Um, you know, some health professionals. So, so mm -hmm. it, you believe it is, you think I it, believe it is. Look, dude, I've been doing a keto esque thing in my life for, six years, seven yeah, years. Yeah. Um, here's what I would tell people is it's not like carbohydrates are bad or evil because we right. need them to live sugar. Yeah. That's the kind of, unfortunately that's processed sugar is the bad evil the thing. killer. And yeah. Like to be clear, I love ice cream. If mm -hmm. I could, I would eat ice cream every single day. I even said in the book, when I first started intermittent fasting to test it out, mm -hmm. I ate a pint of ice cream every single night for 30 days on my intermittent fasting schedule. And I didn't gain a pound wow it wow. was awesome i That's mean i was impressive. sick as a dog there was a lot of dairy in there but uh, okay <laughs> yeah it was good i could imagine right? yeah so so understanding that fuel source um i think becomes important and then also the new book gives some gives people um other areas that they can uh, develop energetically as well so as an example okay. emotional energy is a big one right so i don't know about you but i got people in my life that i call them energy vampires yeah right they suck the freaking life out of you, right? Yeah. They're complainers, they're negative, they're yeah. whatever they are. Maybe they're in a bad place in their life, what have you. But you can't hang out with those people all day long and expect to have any level of energy that you want from positivity and kind of moving forward. So right. we teach people, how do you identify those people and how do you limit their access to you? Mm. Um, you know, because it's not like you can cut some of these, like, what if it's your spouse, right? Like you can't cut that person out of your life, but you also can figure out ways to not let that negativity affect you. 
There's yeah. a great study done in Poland where it was looking at emotional intelligence. What they discovered was people who have higher emotional intelligence are affected less by negative circumstances. And when they kind of double tapped and started asking people why, what they discovered was it wasn't that they were avoiding a bad situation. It was actually more that they were bringing the situation in, allowing it to basically go through them, right? Mm -hmm. Experience it, but not hang on to it, right? right. So I'm gonna do a couple things to figure my shit out, and then I'm gonna move past this issue and, and move on. And I'm not gonna be upset about every single thing that happened with it with me because that's where they get stuck in it. And then that negativity, I call it that audio engineer in your head, um, mm -hmm. just starts throwing the negative tapes over and over and over. And that'll kill an entrepreneur faster than anything. 100%, 100%. Um, I do wanna talk about um, uh, our brains a bit more. And so what, what exactly is happening to our brains when we're not getting enough sleep as opposed to getting enough sleep? Okay, so a lot of different things. Let's talk about a couple of the physical things. So okay. um, more recently, there was a discovery in the sleep literature about something called the glymphatic system. Okay. okay, so this is very interesting. So during stages three and four sleep, it's kind of like the waste management system of the brain kicks in and it pulls all of these proteins out of your neurology, if you will, um, for good reason. So there's so what happens during the day is proteins build up in the brain. Uh, two that are very important to understand are tau and beta amyloid. These, okay. when these build up in the brain, they actually wrap around the nerve endings and they begin to strangle them. Um, that situation is called Alzheimer's, okay? Mm. That's what Alzheimer's is. Wow. So when you start to look at these types of things, we want that waste management system, getting those proteins out as fast as humanly possible and as often as humanly possible. Mm -hmm. um, so having that happen during stages three and four sleep turns out to be very, very important. Well. Unfortunately, a lot of us do habits that keep us from actually having that system in full force. Okay. Alcohol and caffeine are two of the biggies. I want to be very clear about something. I love coffee. Okay. I like scotch. I like beer. Okay. I like bourbon. So like, I like all of these things. You can figure out ways to do them in moderation and time them so that they don't affect the rest of your system. Mm -hmm. For example, I can show you how to use alcohol without having a major effect on your sleep. I can show mm -hmm. you how to use caffeine without having a major effect on your sleep. But if you don't do that, then the neurology comes back and bites you in the ass because caffeine in your brain, it, it actually can turn on cortisol, which is even more powerful. It makes it much more difficult to sleep. Um, so the neurology of it all is you need to get decent sleep. now. Michael, what the hell does that mean? Okay. Just be consistent, right? I wake up every single day at 6 13 in the morning. I don't have an alarm. It happens naturally. I don't know why it's 6 13, but every <laughs> fucking morning I open up my eyes and boom, it's 6 13. <laughs> I, I wish I could tell you why uh -huh, that happens, yeah, but that's, that's awesome. just me. Yeah. Right. And so when I do that, and by the way, I have no caffeine in my system. Like this is my energy level. It's 4:30 in the afternoon where I am. Mm -hmm. Okay. And this is where, and this is where I'm at because I wake up at consistent time. I keep that energy level consistent and it, and it works out well, but avoiding that caffeine, if you can, can be a real help. Um, I usually ask people to stop caffeine by 2 PM. Yeah. Um, most people don't know caffeine has a half-life of six to eight hours. Yeah. So having that, um, understanding, if you stop at two by 10, at least half of it's out of your system. So you have a better mm -hmm. shot of falling asleep. Um, that's definitely something that, that affects the neurology. Um, the other big area that we see other than that physical restoration. So we see the brain clean. We also see physical restoration occurring during stages three and four sleep. This is very important to kind of do a little quick double tap on as well. So during stage three, four sleep, this is where you get the largest bolus of what's called growth hormone is emitted. Mm -hmm. So for anybody out there who knows anything about anti-aging growth hormone is like the holy freaking grail of anti-aging like everybody wants more growth hormone mm -hmm. um easiest place to find it stage three four sleep easiest way to get it don't drink alcohol before bed mm -hmm. go to bed at a consistent time exercise on a regular basis these things will absolutely positively help you maintain that and that physical restoration this is where true cellular repair occurs so whatever insult or injury that you've got going on during out throughout the day, you bump into something, you, you tweak your back, what have you, it gets fixed in stage three, four sleep. So why are people doing shit to not get stage three, four sleep, right? Doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Then there's a whole second function, which is on REM sleep. 
Yes. So a lot of people are like, okay, Michael, well, we understand what that, what about REM sleep? REM sleep is your mental restoration. So this is where you move information from your short-term memory to your long-term memory. Okay. If you're an entrepreneur, you really want to get good REM sleep, okay? Because this is where your ideas coalesce. Mm -hmm. This is where you take disparate information that you've learned for the last three weeks and you wake up and then you've got your vision, okay? That's how that works. There's an old saying, you know, you should sleep on it before you make a big decision. <laughs> this is why, like, yeah. this is the real data on it. Like, because what happens is, is when you take it in your short-term memory and you put it into your long-term memory, it actually gets the benefit of, of your other long-term memories. Oh, mm. this is interesting. So what ends up happening is you coalesce that information and you come up with an answer to yeah. your big question or your big business problem. Um, and in some cases, it's just about taking a nap, right? I can, I, some, of my, some of my high performance sleep coaching clients, we teach them uh, napping strategies. Um, so that way they can actually go on stage or go to a big meeting and be able to perform. You had mentioned my friend, Steve Aoki. Um, for Steve, we have him nap. He doesn't go on until 1.30 in the morning in most cases, right? Yeah. So he's like a shift worker. Uh, basically, <laughs> yeah. uh, but he's a shift worker that's got to have more energy than any other shift worker in the universe because yeah. this guy's on stage throwing cakes. He's got stadium. I mean, it's crazy when you watch this guy do his thing, right? And so we have him napping 15 minutes before he gets on stage so we can rejuvenate him and get him where he needs to go. Um, another example with Steve that uh, might be applicable to some of your entrepreneurs um, from a neurology standpoint, which is of, of interest to you, um, is um, his environment, right? Yeah. So he does a concert. He does 20 to 25 concerts a month. Wow. Okay. That's so a like, lot. Yeah. Yeah. Like uh, Halloween night, um, he was in Atlantic City. The night before he was in Vegas. And the night after he could be in Ibiza. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like that's a very real schedule for this guy. So jet lag becomes a big issue. Um, and so helping him from a circadian standpoint, you know when to sleep, when to use melatonin, caffeine. We've got that dialed in, but we added something new that was interesting. I created what's called a sleeping bag. Mm -hmm. what's a sleeping bag it's a duffel that goes with him that has a topper pillow sheets so it's all consistent mm. right one of the biggest problems with travel is you're sleeping in different beds there's different noises there's different smells all this other stuff that's inconsistent and your brain is like what's going on yeah so your brain is now worried about all those external environmental things as opposed to it's you know four five o'clock in the morning, I need to go to bed. Right. So we're able to take all of that out of the way for him by giving him this layer of consistency that can follow him wherever he goes. So those are some of the different things that I do when I work with these high performance patients. It's incredible. We have to talk about sex, sleep yeah. and sex. You bet. And um, so I, I do know from researching you that um, there's different times for different chronotypes to have sex, right? There is. There and I've is. also heard this about the sexes as well. Some, some, you know, sometimes it's better for men to have sex at, in the morning and sometimes it's better for women in the evening sort so of thing. Yeah, let's, go ta ahead. let's take it let's on and let's it. talk about it. Yes. Okay. So you need five hormones to successfully have sex. Mm -hmm. You need estrogen, progesterone, testosterone. You need cortisol and adrenaline all to be high. Okay. Right? And you need melatonin, the sleep hormone to be low. Right? Okay. So when we surveyed people, 74% of people have sex between 10.30 and 11.30 at night. Surprise, surprise, right? right? What do you think their hormone profile looks like? Oh, it's probably low then, right? Yeah. Everything that needs to be high is low and everything that's high, uh, that's low needs to be high. Okay. Right, so that's one hint. Okay. Uh, number two, what do most men wake up with in the morning? <laughs> An erection. An erection, right? Yep. Morning wood, right? Yep. Yep. If that is not Mother Nature telling you when to use that thing, I don't know what <laughs> is, right? Right. So we know that male testosterone levels are much higher in the morning time. Okay. Um, and to be fair, uh, when we talk, when survey women, a lot of women, they're just too damn tired at the end of the day yeah. um, for sex. They'd much rather try to have sex in the morning. Brush your teeth, right? Like, I get that part, <laughs> but, you know, yeah. like... Make it a fun time. Make it something like, hey, the sleep doctor gave us a prescription. Maybe we should try it. Uh -huh. Give it a give it a try. You might be very, very surprised um, to see what happens. Now, I have focused a little bit more on the male side of things um, from a testosterone perspective, but what about uh, homosexual couples and lesbian couples? Like uh -huh. how do those kind of things work? Believe it or not, there's some interesting things there. For the guys, we know that that testosterone curve makes a lot of sense. But for the female, female couples, they actually have their own form of curve that is represented. And we talk about it in the book. We actually, so here's the thing that most people ask me. They're like, 
Michael, I'm a lion and I married a wolf. Yeah. What do we do? Right. Yeah. Like, how does that shit work? Because I'm not divorcing them because <laughs> they like to, you know, stay up late or I like to get up early. Like, how yeah. does that work? So we actually found a morning time and an early evening time that works with each one of the chronotypes. And we created a matrix. So wow. you can put across the top your chronotype, across the side your partner's chronotype. And we have separate matrices for um, homosexual and lesbian relationships because the hormones are different. So the timing is different. Wow, that's incredible. And that's in the All book science. Energize. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Well, that's in The Power of When and we talk about it as well, again in Energize. If, if you can't have a more better map, a better map, to <laughs> map out the health of your relationship. Yeah. That's one thing that we all need to check out for sure. Absolutely. When we should be having sex and eating and sleeping and all that stuff too, but when to have sex. Yeah. Um, <laughs> when we talk about sex and energize, like let's think about it. Sex yeah. can give you energy. 100%. And you think about it, yeah. right? Number one, closeness with your partner, but number two, just the expenditure, the expenditure of the energy itself. Yeah. Now, to be fair, most guys get tired and most women have a tendency to to get energized. What's yeah. that all about? We're not 100% sure. We think it has to do with testosterone and oxytocin, mm -hmm. and then oxytocin uh, and progesterone and estrogen. We yeah. think that those are very different because they're different in uh, different gendered humans. And we think that could have something to do with it, but I don't think anybody's figured that one out yet. Will a male have more energy if he doesn't have sex in the morning as opposed to having sex because of the, the dip in energy after orgasm? So it's an interesting question. So in sports, we used to tell the athletes, don't have sex, you know, right. build up that sexual energy and, and, you know, push it out onto the field. Right. I don't think it really works. Really? To be honest with you. Really? Like, here's the thing is if you get become completely exhausted after ejaculating and you've had sex in the morning and you're a male, then, uh, you know, maybe that's the time to then go and do a temperature challenge, cold plunge, right? Mm. Or that's when you do your cold shower right? Mm. Or just don't give yourself the opportunity to relax so much that you become sleepy because you just had a full night's worth of sleep. So remember that effect is probably very temporary yeah. um, to be clear. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. This Sorry, is there's fantastic. A truck, there's a truck behind me that's backing up. So no problem. That, no worries. Um, to your listeners. Um, this is amazing. I love this. Uh, anything else you'd like to share about your new book, Energize? Well, so number one, go buy the book. Yes. Um, that's, that's the number one. Go to energizemyself.com um, and there, we've got a pre-order program. Um, it's, it's really good. Like it's very straightforward. It's easy to use. Um, I think people will like it. Um, you know, one of the things that a lot of people have asked me about is they ask me questions like, what bed do you sleep on? Pillows, um, things like that. And from, from an entrepreneurial standpoint, there's definitely some things that I think people should be thinking about. Mm -hmm. um, so if I can, I'd love to tell you about some of the things that like I personally use that I yes. think you're your crowd might be interested. Please, in. please. Yes. Um, okay. So I've got a couple of them here uh, around me. So number one, if you're a snorer, right? So let me tell you something. If I drink bourbon, my wife mm -hmm. says, go stick one of those nose thingy in because I don't want to listen to you snore. I don't snore every night, but if I drink <laughs> bourbon, I do. Yeah. I really like this product. I have no association with this company. Mm. It's called Mute, M-U-T-E. Okay. You can get them at Walgreens for 14 bucks. Okay. Okay. This is an internal nasal dilator. Yes, I'm asking you to shove something up your nose. Okay. <laughs> the reason I like this as opposed to the over the nose strips, number one, the uh, oils on your skin make those things move. I've woken up with like my eye is like permanently closed. <laughs> on no bueno, my friend, no, no bueno. So um, this one is nice. This one in particular I like because you can actually change the aperture of the, of the nostrils wow. themselves. So if you look, I have two different size nostrils. Oh, yeah, and yeah. Everybody does. But yeah. Nobody thinks about that when you've got something that you're shoving up your nose because these guys figured it out. So, and I actually use this when I work out too, and it gives me more air when I work out wow. as well. So nice. I, a little double, double trick here, 14 bucks at Walgreens. I highly recommend that. What else you got? Um, so I have sinus issues. So I, I wake up a lot of times with sinus congestion. Um, I have, we have two, we actually have three animals in our bed. We have two dogs and a cat. Mm -hmm. um and we have a king size bed um and so we're okay with having the animals but i get uh some some of the dander gets to me sure. so i just found this and i do work with this company because i wanted to make sure that the data like it really worked and i use it this is called sinusonic okay. um, this is something that you breathe in and out of it's like a breathing treatment for two minutes um it's uh fda approved but you do not require a prescription we'll get you the um the link for the show notes afterwards so mm -hmm. people can link to it 
Um, but this for two minutes in the morning is awesome. So I use it before my breath work uh, okay. in the morning. So I do meditation and breath work every morning. And this is something that I do to kind of clear my sinuses. I also do this at night. And then my wife says that I don't snore at all. Oh, so great. she's very happy about that one. <laughs> what um, else? Two other things that I think are pretty interesting. So this is a very entrepreneurial product and was created by some really interesting entrepreneurs. It's called Nap Jitsu. Okay. Ooh, touche. So, so this is kind of fun. <laughs> so um, what this is, is uh, it teaches you how to take a nap and you take a nootropic before okay. and some caffeine. And when you wake up, you're good for four hours guaranteed. Wow. Okay? Now I used to call this a Napa latte, right? Where you drink a cup of coffee, take a 25 minute nap, the caffeine kicks in and you're good to go. Yeah. These guys have gone one step further and that's kind of why I like it. So what it is, is you take um, a 25 minute nap, you get, uh, what is it? hundred milligrams of caffeine. And I think it's 50 milligrams of L-theanine. Um, oh, yeah. And let me tell you something, bro. When I wake up after one of these things, I am firing on all cylinders. Wow. Like, okay. It's really like, especially for this crowd of entrepreneurs. Yeah. I think this is something that people are going to want to look into. It's called Nap Jitsu. They have one for meditation called Now. Um, so I've been playing around with these, but I do really like them okay. uh, quite a bit. Um, and then if you are having problems sleeping, I will tell you about um, my own supplement. So full disclosure, I made this myself. Okay. Um, we've tested it. We've been selling it for a while called sleep doctor pm so okay. i have one for helping people fall asleep and then nobody's ever done this before but a lot of people wake up in the middle of the night and you can't take a supplement in the middle of the night that's good for six or seven hours because you're gonna feel like crap the next yeah. day so i made a spray called middle of the night not too creative <laughs> on the name um and what it does is it has a half of the ingredient profile no melatonin in it and people can take it in the middle of the night and wake up the next day and feel Perfect. Wow. So sleep doctor PM is definitely something, especially for entrepreneurs who are like, oh, I woke up and I can't turn off my brain. What do I do? Sleep doctor PM middle of the night seems to be quite helpful for folks. Nice. I like that. Um, you uh, just quick question. What type of breathing uh, breath work are you doing in meditation? Sure. So um, I actually do two different things. So my breath work is uh, based on uh, Wim Hof. If you're familiar with Wim Hof breathing methodology. I am. Um, I was very fortunate. Uh, I got personally trained by Wim um, at a retreat um, and turns out he's interested in sleep. Uh, <laughs> so I got to go and meet the famous Wim Hof, which was super cool, by the way. Um, yeah. He actually taught me his methodology while I was in an ice bath. Nice. Um, I've got a great picture of him and my son. So my son was 18 at the time and my son was like, what are you bringing me to dad? Mm -hmm. um, so we did full on ice bath with Wim teaching us. So I do Wim Hof breathing. And so what we do is we do a 40 breath in and out. Then we do a hold for 90 seconds, mm -hmm. then 40 in and out. And then we go to two minutes, then two and a half minutes, and then three minutes. And yeah. then we're, and then we're done. We then do a kind of more of a heart centered meditation afterwards, but you're in a very different state of mind when you've done this level of breath work. And so the way I describe it to people is, is like this. When I wake up in the mornings, and I don't know about you, Chris, but my brain's like a shotgun. Like I've got mm -hmm. a million thoughts going in a million different directions. When I finish with the breath work and the meditation, and I'll describe the meditation in a second, I'm a sniper. Like yeah. I'm targeted. I know exactly where I'm headed. I know exactly what I need to be doing. And it helps me a lot. Nice. I don't know if anybody else out there can relate to that kind of universe, but that's kind of how it works for me. Um, and breath work has been easily one of those things that has really narrowed my focus. And also if things are like going crazy during the day, mm -hmm. I can do some, I can, you know, pull myself into a room, do 15 minutes of breath work and focus right in. And it's super duper helpful on the meditation side of things. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not a very good meditator. Mm -hmm. um, I've always tried. It just hasn't been something that I've been able to really accomplish and do well until I started uh, using this product. It's called a Muse headband. I don't see it here. Oh yeah, I've heard of it. M-U-S-E. I have no as association with the, with the company. I use this damn thing every day, okay? <laughs> it's amazing. So it's old school biofeedback. So remember back in the day when they'd stick a bunch of electrodes on your head and you'd watch a screen and you lower your breathing and it lowers your heart rate. I mean, we're talking 70s, right? Yeah. Biofeedback. These guys have amped it up a million percent. And so it's a headband that you wear. It yeah. actually measures your brain waves. Right. Kind of cool. Yeah. Um, and it tells you when you're in alpha state. And so it gives you instructions through the headphones. 
But my favorite one is you listen to weather. So you listen to the rain mm -hmm. and it says, focus on your heart rate. And then the rain volume starts to decrease, decrease, decrease. Mm. And as your heart rate decreases, decrease. And so you can change the volume by getting excited or getting more relaxed. And so that's kind of the name of the game. And once you hit that alpha state, little birds will play as a signal to you that you've reached that alpha state. So you try that's to collect cool. birds. So it's like a game, which yeah. is perfect for me um, because I certainly can't keep concentrating on nothingness. Um, that's just not, just didn't work for my brain. So I have to be, I have to tell you, I, I, I can't believe that I found the device, but I'm super excited that I did. And I, I give them away for gifts to people. Like uh, I've got my son doing it. Mm -hmm. um, I've got my COO doing it. Like, it's awesome. I love this neurotech that's coming out and it really helps people optimize their sleep, their meditation, their focus, everything. It's incredible. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and one more yeah. thing I should tell you about that people should look into temperature. So mm. most people don't mm. know, but sleep follows your core body temperature cycle. So one of the things that you need to make sure of is you want it cool and you want it to stay cool. Yeah. Now, the good news is, is we're walking into winter, so it's a little bit easier, but summer and spring, it can be difficult. And anybody out there who's, who's themselves going through menopause or has a partner that's going through menopause, you've got hot flashes, you got all these different things that go on. Mm -hmm. So there's a technology called chili. Um, there's a chili pad, a chili blanket. Yeah. Um, and there's even something that you can wear on your head. Um, I've tried them all. The data is phenomenal. Nice. Like the science is super solid on these things. Um, and so I'm highly recommending them. I do work with the company and that's why I know about their data. Um, and to be clear for everybody out there, the products that I'm talking about, if I say I'm working with the company, that means that their data is solid enough for me to be able to talk with you and give, give this advice to people, use it on my patients and use it on my family and myself. Love it. That's something I'm going to check out because like here in North America, we have centralized air and so it can, it's easy to cool a house. Um, and for me personally, if a room's too warm, I, I start to get restless leg syndrome, Absolutely. right? Yeah. And, um, but I do live abroad a lot. Like I just spent a month in Mexico and I spent many years awesome. living overseas, but they have these silly stupid type of air conditioning that they don't have in the united states that mount to the wall right. and most people believe they get you sick and they don't really properly cool a room and you got to blow them out they've got to be blowing all night um and it's hard to kind of cool down so i'm going to check out that chili pad because check out the chili technology it's yeah. really interesting i've i've given it to easily a dozen patients wow <clears throat> mostly women um, mm -hmm. who've had temperature regulation issues, but some guys um, have found it to be extremely, extremely useful, especially if they have a wife that's cold mm -hmm. um, all the time and is heating up the room a lot and piling on the covers. Mm -hmm. um, this can be, a, this can, might be an alternative um, to that as well. <laughs> so yeah, those, that's another tech that I think is, uh, is valuable as well. And then of course, if you're going to track your sleep, um, either Aura or you said you tried the Whoop Strap, um, you know, what you're looking for is accuracy. Yeah. Um, and so I believe Aura and Fitbit um, went head to head um, against all the others. And those are the two that came out on top. I think Whoop was a close second. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Um, that's fantastic. This is amazing. Dr. Bruce, I love all of this. this I, we could go for another couple hours, but you know, <laughs> we've got things to do. You've got things to do. Absolutely. But, absolutely. Yeah. Well, look, if people want to learn more, yeah, uh, I'm super easy to find on the internet. I'm at the sleep doctor, doctors all spelled out dot com. You can't yeah. forget that. It's a great domain. Um, thanks. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, I, I can tell you the story on that one. It was pretty fascinating of yeah. how I got that. Um, and um, I have the same handle on all the social. So cool. Facebook, Instagram, believe it or not, I'm on TikTok. And um, wow. dude, I'm TikTok famous. I have one video that's over 1.6 million people have watched and shared teaching people how to get back to sleep in the middle of the night. Yeah. Um, so, While they're watching you know TikTok videos. <laughs> right, watching TikTok videos. Yeah. Go figure. Um, yeah. So yeah, you know, there's if people want to get in touch, let me know. I'm happy to help. Yeah, and he's the real deal, you guys. He's been all over the world speaking about sleep and Oprah and Dr. Oz and all this stuff. Just Google yep. him, you'll find him out. So yeah, thank you so much for coming on the show, Michael. I really appreciate it. I, I really appreciate you sharing all your tips and tricks and wisdom with us. Hopefully we can get some more entrepreneurs sleeping well out there, even if they're not bears like me that naturally sleep pretty good. Yeah. And uh, But um, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. 
it's been my absolute honor. Thank you. And thank your audience for listening. And, uh, you know, I just want to wish everybody sweet dreams. And remember, you can get a good night's sleep and still be an incredibly successful entrepreneur. Amen to that. Listeners, thank you guys for tuning in and we'll see you on the next episode. Goodbye, everybody.